Connie. And I'm Connie. And we are Bad, Bad News Travels Fast. Fast. Okay, so we have another question. Okay. And so the person asks, what do you think about how sex is taught in the church? And what are the joys of intimacy? How sex is taught in the church. So my initial thought to that question is, is it taught in the church? I don't... Well, uh, if you're saying just not to do it, unless you're married, yeah, I don't know if that's teaching. Uh, well, and I think too, if you don't have a, if you have a singles ministry, you might be learning stuff. Mm -hmm. If you don't, probably not. So mm -hmm. you would have to be dependent on, I guess, the pastor saying something about it. But mm -hmm. I... Well, I think that the thing that we hear the most is usually, okay, you know, don't do don't it. have sex until you're married. Close your legs. Right. <laughs> don't have sex until you're married. And probably this scripture that talks about fornication and how that's being a sin. Right. But I think sometimes singles may not understand why they shouldn't have sex till they mm -hmm. get married. Outside of the fact that it's a sin. Right. But like on the natural side too, you know, we don't discuss really the soul ties that happen. And really just because you're in a relationship with somebody don't mean you got to sleep with them. Right. right. What are the qualifications? What, what, you know, what qualifies you for my body in that way? Yeah. You know, yeah. or some other things going on or why people do it. People do it just to feel good. People, you know, sometimes women do it because they think if I give myself to you, you'll like me more. And, right. And but the thing about it, sex will attract a man, but it won't keep one. That's so true. And even too, if you're someone like me where your love language is physical touch. Like me. <laughs> you might end up being in sexual uh, escapades because you just want to be touched. You might not necessarily even want sex, Cause but you touch want to be sex. touched, and who you are choosing to touch you is like, well, we might as well have sex. <laughs> so yeah. I think that um, I think what the I think the issue is that we don't teach what intimacy is in church. That's good because most of us need that. Mm -hmm. We need intimacy, and we we look for it in a sexual manner because that's pretty much what we are fed all the time. Mm -hmm. We're fed that on commercials, commercials about food, commercials about clothes. I mean, commercials about the dumbest of, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but we need intimacy. So we need that time with people and there's different types of intimacy, mm -hmm. right? So um, intimacy, what is intimacy? Yeah. Intimacy is, um, wait, let me see. Let me look here. There are different types of intimacy, right? So there is the experiential mm -hmm. intimacy, right? which is when people bond during a leisure activity. Correct. So we're bonding during this podcast. So we're having intimacy. <coughs> um, people may sync up their actions and teamwork to find themselves acting in unison. That's right. intimacy. When you go to church and everybody is worshiping together, that's it's intimacy. Intimate. If you go to a concert, everybody's lifting their hands up, dancing, whatever. That is intimacy. If you're working out with a partner, that yes, is that's intimacy. intimacy. Yes. 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 So, um, there's also emotional intimacy. Mm -hmm. That's when someone feels safe to talk to another person. Mm -hmm. They feel safe to share their feelings with each other, mm -hmm. um, even uncomfortable feelings. Correct. Right. So, and then there's there's the intellectual intimacy. Mm -hmm. That's when I feel comfortable just talking to you about random stuff, like ideas, opinions, my dreams, my visions. Right. Or somebody can simulate you mentally. Right. That's so I can tell you that and you can give me information back yes. and we can just be bouncing off each uh -huh. other. Um, yes. So that's <laughs> awesome. And then there's also sexual intimacy. Right. So when people engage in sensual or sexual activities, when people use the word intimacy, they are often referring to this type. But the issue is you're never fooled from just using one type of intimacy. Right. And a lot of times... You don't necessarily need the sexual intimacy. You need the intellectual intimacy. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to talk to someone and get some mutual conversation back. You need to be able to talk to um, that opposite sex and not have to argue every five minutes. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you've ever had a relationship with somebody where everything you said was wrong. <laughs> 
No, it's I like, was in a relationship like that. Oh my gosh, but people be in relationships like that, like they can't say or do nothing right. That is an <laughs> awful relationship it to be abusive. in. It is abusive. But what a lot of times I think what happens is we grow up with our parents like that. Mm -hmm. think it's nothing normal. you did or said was right. And then we choose a mate just like them. Yes. Because that's what we're familiar with, which what intimacy is. Yes. Intimacy is about closeness, familiarity. Come on. All of that. So that's why you're attracting what you're familiar to. Yes. So we'll look for the worst kind of intimacy. And right? Intimacy. When we just need like regular intimacy. Like not, we don't mm -hmm. necessarily need the sexual intimacy. Intimacy, And also when you have sex with someone, you join with them. Yeah. So you become one. Yeah, if if I have sex with someone, I have I have my spirit, they have their spirit, right? So, you know, even going back to before I got married and being in a relationship with someone before that, I would say when I was with that person, my thoughts were volatile. Mm. My thoughts were like I could kill someone. I had thoughts of killing people. I had thoughts of killing myself. I had thoughts. I had so many like volatile thought processes. Um, and when I got out of that relationship, I didn't really have that no more. Right. Because he was probably carrying that. So I realized that it was probably him and me connecting with him. I'm taking on his spirit. Right. So we often think that we're just getting a piece of the flesh. You're getting much more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're getting all that they've got going on with them. Yeah, and I think we don't realize that. And most time when people talk about intimacy, they only talk about sex because they don't have any other type. Right. Like you gave the four categories, but there are several. There are several types of intimacy. Yes. Right. So you have work intimacy. Right. Yes. Where we can work through things and share tasks on a school project or even at your, your, your place of employment. Mm -hmm. There's emotional intimacy. There's crisis intimacy. How do we deal with crises together? How do we yeah. solve problems, Consuelo? Trauma bonding. Girl, I'm about to throw something. <laughs> <laughs> so I could connect with you through a trauma. Yes. That can be good, but that can be really bad as well. It is. Because it's like the you you connect with the, the part of me that's hurting, right? Right. And sometimes I connect with the abuse of it, right? Even like if you grow up in a home where all they do is yell, right? You get with the person you yelling, right? Right. They don't like that. Right. You know, so it's those things. So Leah, um, you know, sometimes in crisis, people find themselves together in a disaster or a crisis, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be a natural disaster or a real life disaster. Yeah. And so because yeah. we connected on this crisis, we think we have all the other types of intimacies and we can right. get a relationship. No, and we think no. we're compatible somehow. Please talk about that. When we, your compatibility is only based in, we were in a car accident together. That doesn't mean. Or sure. even worse, we saw our friend murdered. Mm -hmm. So, we have this crisis, right? Mm -hmm. And so now uh, we're, we, we're closer together. Now we're communicating all those things. But you're forgetting why you wasn't with that person to begin with. They was trash. <laughs> like, I mean, it, I mean, it can happen that right. way. You know what I'm saying? They weren't good to the friend. They got murdered. Right? Mm -hmm. And so now you're hooking with them mm -hmm. because you had a trauma with them. Right. So it's intimacy, but it's also the type of intimacy not be engaged. Right. That's good. Then you have um, a common cause intimacy where you share time together and energy, uh, finding a common cause, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Bishop Jakes will talks about that being like a comrade or a constituent, right? Mm -hmm. So with a comrade, you have the same enemy. So we're working together because we have the same enemy. Yes. So we're trying to take out the same enemy, right? But once right. the enemy's taken out, we don't have anything else in common, right? right? Or if you have a constituent, right? We're working toward the same goal. But if that person can get to that goal without you, they mm -hmm. gone, right? right? But so where, you know, one thing he said is that we confuse uh, temporary people as lifetime partners, mm. right? Yes. And so you were here yes. for a specific season for a specific and that was reason. It. And I kept you. <laughs> and now I'm wondering why what? my life is turned upside right. down and all around. Right, right. And then, yeah. and then uh, we have this false uh, type of intimacy, this false, um, what is it? 
this false type of honor will we feel I have to stay because of this. Right. You know, um, and it's not the word I'm looking for. It'll come to me later. Um, but then there's also spiritual intimacy, right? Yes. Which is a which which is a, a really big part, probably the most important part, right? Mm -hmm. The spiritual intimacy where we can discuss through prayer, life, um, effort with about God with us together, right? Yes. You, so you're making me think about how sometimes men or women will see someone who's anointed, who's maybe ministering to them and or whatever, attractive. and they think that, yeah, that's all attractive. And they think, oh, that's my spouse. Because they had an intimate moment with them. You know what I mean? And so... Because <laughs> right, every man of God, because we're right. females, it's not your man of God, right? Right, and same for right. males. Every woman of God is not yours. You need to, right? You need to know that aesthetic intimacy. Two people share sensory experiences, like the same taste in music. Like, oh, oh we both like jazz, or we both okay. like gospel, right? Oh, that's good. Yeah, that'll that that mean we need to be together. No, um, it doesn't. <laughs> recreational intimacy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I love working out. I'm going to go to work out in the morning tomorrow, yes. right? So we like we enjoy working out, or we. We enjoy bike riding or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's recreational intimacy. Then you have the creative intimacy. Learning how to paint, right? Me and my oh, sister, I've been to okay. a paint and sip where I had um, a cider and they had, you know, alcohol or whatever. But me and my sister, when she was came to visit, we sat mm -hmm. down and we painted. We watched a video and we painted something together. That's intimacy. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Creative intimacy. It talks about intellectual intimacy where we can talk about opinions and stuff like that. Um, and there's plenty more. And so yeah. when we think about intimacy, we only, most people only focus on sexual intimacy. Yeah. Right? But we have to think about it. And I have to shout out your son because he gave me that earlier where like sex will draw a man but won't keep him. Um, and so I think that's important. So shout out to Elijah. Yes. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, there's, there's intimacy there, but we have to think about it. And most time we only have one or two with people. And the thing right. about it is we don't get to know people before we start sleeping with them. Yeah. Like, I don't even know your last name. I meet you at the club or wherever I meet you at. And the next minute I'm in bed with you, I don't even know anything about you. Right. You know, and then... And, and you know we're what? joining together as one. <sighs> yes. So I'm taking on your spirit, right? Your on. spirits are... Your spirit is now familiar with my spirit. Mm -hmm. So now I'm drawn to you even though I might not even want to be. I don't even like you as a person. But I'm connected. But I'm connected. And now I'm thinking about you for no reason. And I'm misconstruing that I'm thinking about you to be that I like you. That's but good. I'm thinking about you because I joined with you as one. Right. Not because you're supposed to be my, my husband or my wife. Right. Yeah. Not even because we're supposed to be together. At all. Right. <laughs> and right. so we, we look at that and we focus on that. And I think that... We don't talk about the soul ties, which is right. what you're referring to as it relates to sex, the intertwining, the joining together. Mm -hmm. And then think about it. Sometimes in couples, you're in marriage ministry, right? They not liking their sex life because they like how it was with Jerome or oh James. Gosh. Oh my gosh. But that you, you married to John. You know, the, you know what make it makes me think about how most people, 90% of people. The first person they had sex with is not the person that they married. Mm -hmm. So you you going to run through all these people, right? Or let all these people run through you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And now you have, and, and you're getting damage along the way, right? So you connect yourself with this one person and you find that they're not trustworthy. So now you have trust issues. You get rid of that person. You start with this person and you find that, um, they're not clean, maybe. Okay, so you you might be dealing with that, and you're like, yeah, no, this isn't gonna work. Mm -hmm. So you that person is gone. Then you get with this person, and you find that they're a cheater, or you know, I mean, it's just like you're going from one person to the next, to the next, to the next. But if you would just wait and allow yourself to hook up with someone. Or date. I don't want to say hook up. That's probably a bad word to use. Date. Court. I'm a little older, so I gotta be careful using words that they use today because they're not the same definitions. <laughs> but um, you want to make sure to hook up. I mean, to date someone um, that can have intimacy with you, who doesn't necessarily need to be inside of you to do that. That's good. 
That's right? Good. So I need to, if I've had traumatic relationships or I've had, let's just say I had two other boyfriends, right? Um, and, and I now want to just take the time to get myself together and I want to be married. I'm coming up on 30. I got to get this, get my life right or whatever, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I now need to understand what real intimacy is. Correct. And I need to distinguish between the intimacy of my mother and father mm -hmm. that probably caused me to be in, and it might not be a mother and father, but environment mm -hmm. that caused me to be in relationships with these people that I should not have been in. Mm -hmm. Right. Then also too, we have, um, diseases. So I'm having sex and now I have, herpes or HIV like I'm thinking of the diseases that Please, don't yeah. just go away gonorrhea you know what I'm saying I mean you got yeah. chlamydia gonorrhea yeah. syphilis I mean there are many things you can get but I'm thinking about um a disease that I might have to be dealing with, with for, for the, the rest, rest of my life so now I have to have the responsibility of meeting a good man or a good woman and then telling them, I have HIV or I have herpes. It's like, oh, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. I can't even imagine yeah. what people go through. I, yeah. And there's a, a lot of people who have herpes and HIV. Mm. So you have to deal with the emotions of that, the shame of that. Yeah. Um, it, am I going to die from this? Because I think even though they have medications that you can take medications, you can live now. See, back in the day, if somebody got HIV, it seemed like they got HIV, they got AIDS, and that they died. Mm -hmm. You know, but now people are living with it, yeah. right? But there's still something inside of you, deep inside, that's like, can I die from this? Right. So there's also like a fear mm -hmm. that is just lingering around there. But I also... Um, when when I looked up about intimacy, it talked about people can fear intimacy due to a variety of reasons. And one is like abandonment issues, yeah. um, fear of rejection. So I don't want you to reject me. So I'm just going to give you my body. Right. Because I think that you'll stay because of it. Right. And my body, your body has never kept anyone. Yeah. Like we, we often look at um, Beyonce. She's a be she's beautiful, mm -hmm. right? According to worldly standards, right? Yeah. She's beautiful. She's in shape. She has money. She's works hard. Okay. Um. She has a husband who cheated. Beyonce's beautifulness did not keep him. In the However good her. the sex was. However good it didn't it right. was. He had his or, own issues. He had to work through. Right. So it's. It's not about the the outward appearance either. You know what I'm saying? So changes. abandonment, you can have abandonment issues, fear of rejection, control issues. Mm -hmm. um, that's fear. You may fear losing your independence as you become emotionally connected to others. So you become connected to them and then you fear that the relationship is going to go sour. So you try to control them. My God. And no one wants to be controlled. So it ends up being a um, a catch-22 or a... It's like you're working against yourself. Mm -hmm. You're trying to control a person who can't be controlled. Now they're one. rebelling against the control. And they start rebelling against you. So now what you've created is a repel. Mm -hmm. Where they are repelling you. Mm -hmm. Right? When you need them to magnetize towards you. Mm -hmm. I don't, but anyway. Um, and also past abuse. Yeah, yeah. And those are because we're trying to fill a void. And yes. we talked about that sometime um, in all of our conversations. But when you're trying to get somebody to fill a void for you, right? when the void is filled, you no longer have need of them. Right. And then we forget that babies come from sex, right? Right. And I know that people think pulling out works. But a lot of Child. people have babies from it doesn't, pullouts, right? It doesn't always work. Right. And, and people don't want to use condoms, right? right? And so now you have a baby with somebody you don't even like. Or you have an abortion that you're dealing with the emotional scar of that. Correct. Because a lot of times somebody will get pregnant with somebody that they really, you don't even deem them to be somebody worthy to have a baby with. Right. 
but you were just caught up in the moment. Oh my gosh. So now you're getting an abortion and there's an emotional scar left from that. And the, you know, we never hear about that when it comes to abortion, like the emotional scars, the fact that you might remember the very date that you went to get that abortion. The pain you feel after. Like I've never had one, but people have after, talked to me about it. Yes. The emotional pain that you feel afterwards. And the fact that you might not have thought you were killing your baby, but now you're having thoughts that you killed your baby. So initially, you might have thought, oh, this isn't a baby. It's just a glob of whatever. But after it's finished, here comes the enemy to tell you, see, you done killed your baby. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's good for you to get filled up with all the other intimacies first mm -hmm. so that you can clearly see when it comes to the sexual intimacy part. And I think that probably would make it better anyway, right? Because there's a connection in other areas, right? And there has to be a level of trust for real intimacy to take place anyway. Yes, yes, that's right? true. For me to be able to be whole and vulnerable and naked and unashamed, as I like to say mm -hmm. with you, um, I need to first have trust in other levels of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes people miss that. And I feel like if you... It's a value thing, too, yeah. because what has made all these people worthy of your body? Because we are dating or in a relationship doesn't mean that you are worthy of my body. Right. right? I, I come from the, the point that if you want to be with me sexually, you need to be taking care of me emotionally, mentally, physically, financially. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Spiritually. Spiritually. Do you got a word? Right. <laughs> Can I get a word if I need it? Can Seriously. You, right. Can you yeah. pray like if something's going on? And so there yeah. is, you need to be able to take care of me in every aspect. Right. Not just in a physical one. Right. Right. And so I think that, you know, yes, we need to do, we do need to talk about like why not to have sex. Not just, right. not just because it's a sin against God, but the soul ties, the possibility of diseases, the emotional trauma, because, you know, people like to talk about like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, I'll put a magnum on, but it ain't a, con a condom big enough to deal with your emotions. That, come on. Come there's there's on. no condom to protect you from that. Oh my gosh. When you leave and sleep with your best friend or your cousin, sister, whoever. Right. Right. right? Or and when you find out that he has a whole nother life with a whole family and a wife. So it's best to wait you know, it and is. God is full of wisdom. God yes. is wisdom. He's knowledge. He's understanding. And he's really just looking out for you. For you. I mean, he has your best interest at heart. Right. So he wants the person that has sex with you to love you the way that he does. Right. And to take care and to cover your emotions and your feelings in a safe way. Like God is not against sex. He right. invented it. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's a good thing for a husband and wife because you have all the, or you're supposed to have all the other areas covered, covered too. You're supposed to. Supposed to. I changed it. Right, right, right. So, so <laughs> you're supposed you. to have all of that other thing right, covered. Right. And so it's a thing that is honored. And your body is precious. Oh my gosh. Both men and women. Yes. Right? You are not a sex object. Yeah. Right? And a lot of it is just wanting to feel good. good. You know, when you really need to be dealing with why you don't feel good why don't you feel good what's wrong why do you feel sad why do you feel lonely you probably need the other intimacies right you know what i'm saying right. so you know um when it comes to dating it's just great to wait it is you know what kind of intimacy we forgot about communication right you have to be able to communicate yeah. and understand that what a one word means something different for you than it might be for him and vice versa. Right. right? And so I think Bishop Diggs talks about this too. Like he told his wife, like, let's go on vacation. And he thinking like, oh, she's going to get her thong and we're going to go out and do all these things. And she thought, I don't got to put makeup on. I can stay in the bed. Right. right? And then <laughs> they, they get on vacation and she want to sleep. And he like, we don't need right. to sleep in Paris. Like we could have stayed home for that. So you have to ask people like, what do you mean? And be able to talk about things yes. and to communicate and understand each other and, and listen 
Yeah. To hear their intent, not what you think it to be because of your yes. own trauma. So you need communication intimacy because you don't communicate. And I don't know how marriages work. I don't know if I'm married yet. Right. How do they work if you don't communicate? That's so true. And it, it is so funny that, um, yes, you do have to communicate, but you, you just made me think like when me and my husband went to Florida a few years back for a marriage conference. And I was so like overworked and overwhelmed. Okay. And I could not wait to just be at the hotel and not have the responsibility of work, family, you know, the whole, all the responsibilities to just be like, oh, I got I got a break. I don't have to do nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so um, we get there and I just want to sleep. Like, he's like, he want to go. He want to do, you know, all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, so he's like mad. Because I don't want to do, do I, I don't want to do none of that stuff. Um, but in past times, I would have been ready to do all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that I, I say all that to say that sometimes we grow mm -hmm. and we're at a different place in life, and mm -hmm. we need something different. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to grow and know to communicate that with a spouse, right? You know what I mean? Because in normal time, he was expecting what we normally would have done. And I needed sleep. Right. But circumstances <laughs> have changed. You had been overworked. And even with that, like have a conversation like, hey, I know we usually like to run and do everything. Right. But I'm feeling really tired. So I need like a day to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And then, all right, I got to, you know, you got to go do some stuff. You're like on vacation. But that's just the communication about it. Yeah. And I think it's good when we understand and learn how to communicate and get filled on the inside yes. right so I just don't I'm not needy and I need you to be what you never can be mm -hmm. right I'm not trying to get somebody because I'm lonely and so I'm using my body as a way not to feel lonely mm -hmm. because your body's way too precious for that yes you you know I, my, my father my uh, biological father told me like your your body is a flower it's precious and yeah. it's made for your husband right flowers are delicate if you throw it around they break Right. right. They're delicate. They're precious. And you have to care for flowers or they often die. Right. Yeah. If I don't water it and put some flower or plant food in it. Right. Yo, homie, you don't last a day. Right. Right. So those are the things. So when you look at the value in your work, you are not made for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And so once you know that, you need to make people qualify. And really, it's your yeah. husband. And then, you know, what I hear about sometimes, too, is like the, the sexual the sexual intimacy and in marriages is not good when they like what the old boyfriend did yeah and they with the new husband it's awful to compare or even and people say they don't and they're not truthful even having the memories you know what i'm saying like i'm grateful that most of my memories are just bad <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, you know, it caused a lot of emotional trauma being in other relationships before I got married, but they were just bad. So I really had a good start, right? <laughs> you know, to start fresh, but that's not always the case, right. you know? And so you'll find yourself thinking about this past partner when you're with your spouse. And also when y'all going through stuff. Oh. Now you're going through something and now you're really thinking about old dude mm -hmm. or old girl or old girl ready to give them a call because you want to have an experience that you had before that was probably based off of some type of lust. So guess what? It's still not even going to be the same. If you go back and you can go back and hook up with them, but it's not even going to feel the same. Mm, that's deep. It's not even going to be the same. So you got to think about it. You got to think about it. So maybe we, we do need to talk about relationships and why not to do stuff beyond just don't do it. Because when you tell people right. don't do it, don't touch the stove. What the kid do? Touch, touch the, the stove every single time. And right. we are Because we haven't explained anything. We are rebellious people. We are, but we haven't explained anything. I haven't taught you why you right. shouldn't touch the stove to give you something to think about. Like, oh, I think they might think a little differently if they consider the fact that I might get burned. 
right? right? And beyond just, I might just get an STD. Beyond the fact that I might yeah. have a kid, right? But I'm emotionally tied to this person and things don't work out and now I can't eat, my hair falling out and I'm yeah. depressed and sad. Like, we don't talk about those things, right, right. you know, for people to, to think. But when you do it in the in the way that God created, it's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. And I think that we should be teaching people how to have intimacy. Yes. If we, if we would teach, like, we went through a list of intimacies that I had no idea there were intimacies but we went through a whole list of different types of intimacy if if you could focus on those 15 right <laughs> you know what i'm saying if you could focus on those 15 things and y'all can come together and be flowing in all 15 of those areas then you might want to think about getting married because <laughs> you got you a good one and then have sex Right. You can have all the sex you want. Hopefully. All the sex. Hopefully. Prayerfully. No. Prayerfully, you didn't wait to not have all the sex. Yeah. I've heard some challenges. Oh, God. Yeah, I, that's what I'm thinking. So, yeah. Yes. They can do all of that. And then you want to grow in your sexual life with your partner and not have all these other things. Right. Learn like, stuff we, with your yes, partner. Yes. Learn it's what totally we like together. Okay. Right. You don't have to know everything. Right. Let him teach you. Let her teach you. Let's just flow and have fun with it, right. you know. And you can literally have fun. Like you can just have a day where we're gonna have to put that this is for adults only. <laughs> there we go. Right. Um. But you could just have a day where you just like, let's just try a whole bunch of different stuff and see right. what we can do. You know what I mean? Right. And some stuff you might laugh. Some stuff you might have saw on TV and realized. None of that works because they've got angles and uncomfortable <laughs> positions that don't even work. <laughs> How about what what uh, can, what do they say TV hanging TV on the chandelier like any type of love movie? Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? But they say hanging on the chandelier. Ain't nobody. What chandelier is gonna hold me? Right. Like I don't, you're through the right. I, <laughs> I don't even understand like how I could even hold a chandelier without it falling down. Right. So <laughs> that's that doesn't work. Cause we, we, but you hang it from the chandelier, you end up on the floor somewhere. We right? see that on the TV though. Or people it, make comments like that. Yeah, man, you're not hanging on the chandelier. Like, so, but anyway, right. It is well. We uh, thank you for listening. Yes. I hope we answered your question. Yes. I gave you a little bit of teaching about what sex is, what intimacy is, how to experience it, and have intimacy with God. Know who you are yes. before you try to have intimacies with other people. Absolutely. Like, be into yourself first. Yes. And Google. Google the intimacies. Um, especially if you're in a relationship right now, Google all the intimacies and find out if you're flowing in that area. Right. And you know or what we can put the and link also at the bottom. To, yeah, we'll put the link at the bottom. And also to find out what your love language is. Yes. And if the person you are dating, if they're willing to do your love language. Because, you know, a lot of times we do the love language that we like. Right. And that so communication. I might like physical touch and you might like gifts. And I'm like, I don't want to buy you a gift. I just want to hold your hand. Right. <laughs> or, or they're buying you gifts all the time. And you right. Have, and you're I like, need, I don't I need care about this. Yes. I don't care about these gifts. Like, why are you? And, you that's, know? and that's part or of loving a person. You you'll act like it's Ooh. okay when it's really not. So he keeps bringing them gifts. And you're even telling your friends, like, oh, he buys me gifts all the time. But your response even isn't the excitement. So he buys you a gift and you're like, Oh, well, thanks. Mm-hmm. Because you don't, that doesn't move you. What does move you might be quality time. What does move, move you might be acts of, service. Of, acts of service, words of affirmation. Right. Can he talk? Can he affirm you? Can he affirm you? You know, so those are the things that I would say for a single person in church. Get that stuff straight first. Get the love languages straight. Find out what your love language is. Find out what intimacy is and see how you can flow in them. Because if you're someone who can't even do holding someone's hand, you might need help from some stuff. Yeah, some traumas or something. If you can't do um, hugging someone for a long time. All you can do is sex. You've got some stuff going on that needs to be healed. 
Right. Before you get into a Before whole Before you get into relationship. a relationship to destroy somebody else. Right. Because you are you already have some damage. You can tell by what you can or can't do, right? As mm -hmm. far as intimacy goes. So you don't want to put that onto someone else. Right. And I think the good point about that, knowing your love language, when you're in a relationship and part of dating and courting is the getting to know each other. Yes. So you should be learning about their love language before you have sex with them. Absolutely. Because their love language is, is what is going to have them to be filled up. Their love tank will be full. And then later, when you get married, the sex will be great. But if that love tank ain't full... You gonna search it out for somebody else? The somebody sex ain't else? gonna be as good as you think, right? And then you'd be disappointed now, like right. And then now right. you're trying it again with somebody else, and so we're perpetuating the cycle, right, over and over and over again. When in reality, you probably need help from some stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all right, what are we showcasing? Oh, we are showcasing black girl sunscreen, right? And everybody needs it. Absolutely. Let me tell you, Consuela, what? I went to Costa Rica with my students, right? And we were on the beach for five hours. And you thought because you was black that I couldn't get sunburned. This girl, <laughs> my forehead was burnt, my nose, my chest. Ooh. It was so bad. My uncle laughed at me like, dang, why your forehead so black? And my nose <laughs> was burnt. And then, you know, I was at the beach all day and the guy was like, put sunscreen on. So, you know, you put a little bit on, but you're in the water. So you're watching right. it. So he was like, every time you think about it, do it. He didn't do that. Mm. I got back to get in the shower. I was like, oh, like it was so bad. Yeah. So yeah. everybody needs sunscreen in different seasons. And so you should get you some. And so this is one um, person that does it. And it's just called Black Girl Sunscreen. Mm -hmm. And so you can burn. So you need to get some. Now, what about your windbreaker? So I got this at Poets in Autumn when we went to Poets in Autumn and we volunteered. I love volunteering at Poets in Autumn. So check them out. I'm sure they have lots of um, YouTube videos. Their poetry is absolutely awesome. And I bought this from Genetics. Um, it's, um, it's spelled different, but it'll be in the link. It's not like Genetics, but it's, yeah. So anyway, this is called... Not my own. So I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus Christ. Yes, and I just love this. Like, it's so comfortable and cool. It has a hoodie. You know, so nice little windbreaker type, you know, jacket. So, and all her stuff is on sale right now. Oh. Um, so I think I paid 60 bucks for this a few years ago. And it's like 25 right now. Uh -oh. So... Get on it, child. <laughs> Genetics. Yes. And the link will be in the description. Yes. Don't forget, as always, to follow us on Instagram at bncf.podcast. Mm -hmm. Like, subscribe, and share. Send questions and comments. And also, if you have a black business that you want us to talk about, let us know. Send yes. us something. And we'll definitely advertise it on the podcast. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we really appreciate you. Yeah. Until next time. God bless. <laughs>